Hello everyone and welcome to week 9 of the TBL. Your New York Empoleon are here taking on the C-137 Hoopas coached by Colin. Now we are going to be going for the division title with this match. If we win it, we are the division champions and we can go in as the one seed into the playoffs in a couple of weeks. We can take week 10 and be kind of chill. But we've got a doozy of a matchup uh, up ahead of us right here. Megalodios. Tornadus, Heatran, Gengar, Zygarde 10%, and Greninja Battle Bond are the ones I'm predicting him to bring, but it wouldn't surprise me if he brought almost anything on his team. Durant is scary. Sylveon is scary. Virizion is scary. I mean, his team is full of threats. Now, we are going to get connected with him and try to get this battle underway as soon as possible, so I will get you guys connected and not waste any more of your time. Enjoy the battle. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are. I just... <laughs> it's been like three hours since I recorded the last part of this, so <laughs> bear with me. It is now actually just passing midnight, um, and we see his team here. Zygarde, Virizion, Greninja, Megalodios, Gengar, and Heatran. So we did get most of them right. Uh, we don't see the Tornadus. Instead, we see the Virizion which is just fine. Um, I am equally worried about both of them, so that's fine. Um, obviously, Gengar, Heatran, uh, not ideal for my team. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't bring those. Um, I ex kind of expect a Heatran lead, and I kind of want to lead Hothead as a result. Um, the only thing that would be a problem there would be if he leads Zygarde. I'm expecting my Skarmory lead, but I don't think he would do that, and also we have answers to Zygarde in other Pokemon, so... Um, the other option would be leading Jellicent. Um, and if I lead Jellicent, then I don't think it matters what he leads. It's a good lead. Uh, it doesn't have things to hit Gengar super hard, uh, but I can just like Will-O-Wisp. He'd never go into Heatrain on it. And get that off on something. I don't know what his switch into it is. Jellicent actually seems like a really good lead here. So let's go with Jellicent, and uh, good luck to my opponent, Colin, C-137 Hoopas. Whew, I'm nervous. Uh, it's been it's been like an evening of editing videos and stuff, and now we're back in battling after I recorded the beginning of this video. I probably should have re-recorded just to get back into the moment, but we're here, got our Calyx up, everything's good to go. Uh, what's his lead going to be? Good boy. Good boy, the Zygarde. All right, so that is what I thought he was going to predict my Skarmory or something and go with the Zygarde lead. Now we do have the Ice Beam and ICMZ on this Jellicent. Now where is my calc for Jellicent? There you are. And we've got Zygarde 10%, uh, which obviously doesn't go into the calc because they don't have it, but I do know its stats by heart at this point uh, because I've had to type them into this calc so many times. And so, if he's running no defensive investment at all, regular Ice Beam kills, straight up, without concern. So, the other option is clicking Willow. But I think just an Ice Beam will reveal that we have it, and I understand that that could be a problem for the long term, but I'm not revealing that I have ICMZ, because ICMZ really, really hits Virizion hard now. Um... If I can, if I can get off an ICMZ, I'm doing 60, 50 to sixty percent to a Virizion. So then it doesn't, it doesn't like that. So he just goes straight for the thousand arrows. We know he has it. We know he's obviously going to click it. It's the the most spammable move in the game. Uh, and that did a lot of damage. This thing might be banded, and it's dead. It's just dead. Zygarde is down, and that is a huge threat out of my face. Jellicent kills Zygarde with. Ice Beam, and we do get to keep the ICMZ now for later, just in case we need it uh, for something else. So Zygarde goes down, and Greninja's gonna come out. Now I cannot let him get the free Battle Bond up here. There's no reason to let Jellicent go down. It still has Recover, it still has plenty of viability left. The question is, do I go into to Umbreon here, or do I go into Venusaur here? Um, and... I don't, I mean, he's not going to go for a water type attack, obviously, it's just sitting in here in a Jellicent. So I'm going to expect him to go for a dark type attack, which makes Umbreon really, really tempting. And uh, Greninja 
Dark Pulse to an Umbreon is doing like 11%. Um, even a Gunk Shot uh, to an Umbreon, which I he might tech, uh, would be doing about 40%. So Umbreon seems really, really safe. I can't touch him back except for Toxic. Um, but I might just Snarl and hit whatever comes in on the Snarl. So there's the Dark Pulse. So a couple of good predictions to start this match. That's really, really good. Um, don't want to see that onto my Jellicent, and it is special Greninja, so I am happy. He might U-turn. That's fine. Um, he's life-orbed, it looks like. I didn't see the thing, but I do see the, the HP now. Didn't see the recoil. Wasn't looking. Should be looking, is what I'm, what I'm hearing. Um, so I could wish, but I think Snarl is actually going to be the better play. He could go into the Virizion here, and that makes me want a Toxic. Um, instead, he's not going to go, in my opinion, into Gengar or Latios on a Umbreon. He may stay in and go for something crazy, like a power-up punch or something, but Toxic is the safest if he goes into the Virizion here. Yeah, he's going to U-turn. Um, U-turn into Virizion. That's that's my expectation. Um, and if he does do that, we get a Toxic on the Virizion, and we get to start whittling it down. Uh, my plan, according my team builder, and my plan still... Uh, is definitely hazards are hazards are hazards are hazards um, and we should use them we should take full advantage of them um, and we do get the version on the switch this is you know for a battle after midnight this is going swimmingly <laughs> I would say um, we're getting the predictions right we're getting everything so far I don't want to start over predicting or getting overconfident about my predictions um, this thing doesn't touch Skarmory. It just can't hit Skarmory. Uh, it also doesn't really touch Venusaur. Um, and that may be a good chance to get my Mega off so that Heatran isn't as threatening to my team, because obviously Heatran's a problem. Um, and this thing's gonna close combat right here. So the other thing I could do is go into, to Jellicent, but it, it's probably Venusaur. I mean, Venusaur's got the bulk investment in order to take hits from this thing. Um... If he does have, like, Phytinium Z or something crazy, we can burn that on the Venusaur. Uh, he could have Stone Edge uh, for the Skarmory or something like that. So he just goes for the Leaf Blade, predicting the switch probably into something. Uh, probably into Jellicent, but I don't know why I'd go into Jellicent on a Brizion. That seems really risky. Um, so we get our Mega because we have to Mega, obviously. It's required in the League. You know, that's Week 9 now. And we can Sludge Bomb. I'm thinking that there's a good chance that Heatran comes in. Um, but even if Heatran comes in, here's my thought. Even if Heatran comes in, then where am I at? I mean, I just go for the... I go for the Sludge Bomb, I don't hit it, and then he goes for an attack, he doesn't kill me, and I Earthquake then, so I'm in the same place. So I think Sludge Bomb's still the same, the safest play. Um, he probably is going to go into Heatran here, and I could have gotten a huge Earthquake off. Um, it's Gengar this time. Okay, so Gengar is going to come out. We're going to Mega, obviously. That's required. So Earthquake obviously would have hit this thing too. Not revealing it. I'm okay with that. I wish I had a uh, knockoff right now because that would have been a cool play. Um, although Justified would have been really terrifying. Uh, but we'll break a Sash. Uh, is he Black Sludge? Is he, he's Cursed Body, obviously. That's Gengar's ability. So we, he gets rid of my ability to Sludge Bomb. Uh, does that matter right now? Um, is he gonna switch back out now that I can't sludge bomb? Would be an interesting question. Um, after that sludge bomb damage, Earthquake kills this thing. Uh, if he Will-O-Wisps, he might Will-O-Wisp here. Uh, but I think... Oh, I think, do I reveal the Earthquake now or do I wait for the Heatran later? I have other answers to Heatran. Have other answers to Heatran. I've got to, I've got to take the kills where I can get them against his team, which is so fast and hits so hard. Can't trick my Mega Stone. <laughs> Cannot trick my Mega Stone. Um, and this Earthquake should take out Gengar. No, he's living, but that trick probably means he's choice. So he's probably gonna switch out here. My Sludge Bomb is still disabled. Um, he can't go into Heatran now that he knows that I have Earthquake, and he could go into Latios here pretty freely. Um, he could stay in and trick again. Uh, because my Sludge Bomb is disabled, he can definitely go into Latios. I'm just gonna click Giga Drain. 
I think. I want to say Giga Drain's the play. Because that trick makes me feel like he's got to be choiced. Right? He has to be choiced something. My expectation would be Specs. Um, and he's going to switch it out. And go into Latios here. Streamlined is probably that Latios. Yeah. And so we do get a Giga Drain off. Obviously not going to do much of anything. Um, but hey, damage damage on this thing where the ICMZ can come in and uh, do about 60%. So obviously this thing is a problem for my Venusaur. And it can just go for a Psy Shock or a Psy Kick on my Mega Venusaur. Now one thing I can do is go out into Gardevoir. Gardevoir actually, in a really interesting twist, gets uh, resists both stabs of Mega Latios, and I don't know what coverage it gets to handle uh, Psychic Fairy type. It could get like Shadow Ball, but Gardevoir can take one. I am Scarf, so I'll outspeed on the following turn, but I don't know if it's time to go into Gardevoir yet, or do I just go back into Umbreon, which is the safest, easiest play, and continue to uh, chip away at his team, and I do want to do that. The goal of this team, the expectation is that my team is going to chip at his team until it's time for my two wall breakers in Skarmory, not Skarmory, wow, in Electivire and Gardevoir to come in and take him out um, once and for all and just like handle his team. Getting rid of the Zygarde is so good because it gets rid of a lot of his offensive pressure on the physical side. Uh, just about everything else with the exception of maybe Greninja and definitely Brizian are special. Um, he's Dragon Dance. He is a Dragon Dance Latios set. What do I do with that information? Uh, Foul Play? He's at plus one attack now, and he's probably not timid. Uh, probably Jolly instead. So where's my Umbreon at? Umbreon versus Latios. It's Mega Latios, and he just Dragon Danced. I don't know if he's 252, but what if we say he's Jolly 252? What if we say that? How much Foul Play? Okos. Um, I don't know what attack. Dragon Claw? Let's look at the Dragon Claw. How much does this do? Curiosity begs the question. 50%, so we're surviving that. Okay, Foul Play. Um, Outrage? I looked at Dragon Claw, but not Outrage. That's a problem. Outrage does probably kill from here. Um, it is D-Claw and not Outrage, thankfully. Because Outrage would have killed me. Um, but this foul play should take him out. And it does. I don't know why I looked at Dragon Claw first and then it was Dragon Claw. That's super random. Dude, this this prediction game is just, just on point right now. Mega Latios with foul play. Oh, I put a U into the word foul play. Alright. So... Umbreon has gotten to the point where he's a little bit injured. Um, I'm really glad he didn't, go into he didn't go into Greninja here. In fact, this Heatran doesn't have an air balloon. We do know it does not have an air balloon. I can snarl it. I don't think I outspeed it. I can wish just in case he goes for a stealth rock and then anything else on the switch can, can handle this thing. Um, him going for stealth rock is not ideal. It's really not what I want. Um, I'd rather he just take me out. Um, but with the Latios gone, I can actually just go into my Electivire soon and start Earthquaking things. Snarl's an option, Wish is an option, everything's an option. All four of these moves are viable moves and reason. there's a reason for each of them. Um, except for Toxic on a Heatran, obviously. I like the Wish, um, and it gives me a switch into Heatran next turn. So, does set up the rocks, and that's fine. Uh, my team is not weak to rocks. Uh, now, I have the Assault Vest on the Electivire, and so I expect that this turn, this Heatran is going to try to take me out with a Fire-type attack. I have the Assault Vest such that I can probably take any one hit from this thing, and I'm going to get a huge Wish back up, but getting my Electivire burned would be worst-case scenario by a long shot. Um, Heatran overheat does 60 to 70 percent to my Electivire, which is out, uh, EV trained to outspeed this thing every time. But if he does go for a Heat Wave, if he does go for a uh, 
eruption even. Eruption would be a problem. How much does an eruption do? Eruption doesn't kill, but uh, something like a lava plume that can burn would be really, really problematic. Now, Gardevoir is an interesting play here too, because I can become immune to fire type attacks, but I don't really do much back to him. Uh, Jellicent can handle this thing, any one hit from this thing, and not worry about the burn as much. I do like the Jellicent play. I think it's safe. We're still looking to get Heatran. Uh, heat We're still looking to get Electivire in safely when the time comes. Um, we are going to take some Stealth Rocks here. But we just resist both stabs. If he does go for the uh, Earth Power, which I was ex kind of thinking he might do, um, I figured that would be a fine switch. We'll get a ton of HP back here. And that's going to allow us to click Scald and not have to worry about anything. Um, what's left, Virizian, Greninja, Gengar, and Heatran, and Virizian's already toxic, so it doesn't mind a Scald. Um, the other option is clicking Z Ice Beam, because he can't stay in. He cannot. He could have Bloom Doom. This thing could be Z Bloom Doom. We know it's not Air Balloon. I'm kind of going to expect him to be Bloom Doom. I'm going to play as if he's Bloom Doom. Now that I said that out loud, it seems like that's something that easily could be. Uh, so Solar Beam, Z Move. Would Oko my Jellicent? Do I care? I mean, I care. Jellicent can handle some of the stuff on his team, but I'm just gonna click Scald. Withdraws, goes down to Verzian probably. Goes down to Greninja. Which we know at least has the U-turn, so Scald Burn would be great. We do get it. Hacks are not his friend right now. Um, now we do get the burn on the Greninja. I don't want it getting a Battle Bond up. Battle Bond scares me. Um, and I haven't had a good time to get my Skarmory in yet. But this seems like as good a time as any to go back into Venusaur. I don't think he can do anything to Venusaur. I just don't foresee him being able to. If I can get my rocks up with Skarm though, I can just stay up. So Hydro Pump comes out. So big prediction right there, because if I stayed in, which I was never going to do, but if I did, that's a good prediction right there. Um, I don't know what he wanted me to go into there, that the Hydro Pump, probably the Umbreon, like I did last time on the Dark Pulse. Um, we do get a free Giga Drain here. He could go into Heatran predicting the Giga Drain. Do I care if he predicts the Giga Drain and goes into Heatran? Like last time when I went for this, this Sludge Bomb, I was willing to hit the Heatran. So I think I'm going to Giga Drain here. If I can get rid of the Greninja, which I obviously can't, but if I could, that would have been great. Wireless comes back out, so that's the Verizian. But you can't touch me. And you're just going to take a Giga Drain, which gives me a little bit of health, and you're going to take Toxic. And I think you're going to go into Heatran here. And I'm going to click Earthquake. I'm going to click Earthquake. If he stays in, he stays in. Ooh, Zen Headbutt. Okay. And we flinch. Okay. So he's down to 50%. Now Venusaur... How much value does Venusaur hold now? Knowing that. Knowing that this thing has Zen Headbutt. Uh, very little. Very little of what I need is provided by this Venusaur. Uh, at this point. So I'm going to let it go down. I'm going to click Sludge Bomb in case he misses the Zen Headbutt here. But I don't want him to miss the Zen Headbutt. Uh, because this gives me a free switch into Skarmory and I can set up rocks. Um, and actually I think spikes are better because this and the Heatran, well Heatran doesn't resist rocks, I think spikes are better than rocks at this moment, because um, if I can get a second layer of spikes up I'll hit everything more than rocks. Um, 
and yeah, we're gonna go for spikes here. What do you have? You're switching into the Gengar. The Gengar. Yeah. Not unexpected, especially with. Um, what's it called? Especially with Mega Venusaur down, this Gengar obviously has a field day. Get it tricking something onto something. Um, the question is, what is he tricking onto what? What am I letting him trick onto? Uh, i tempted to switch out into the Umbreon at this point, because Umbreon's not that valuable at this HP range, uh, where everything else has a ton of utility left. Umbreon is not as valuable. The alternative would be letting Skarmory get whatever trick item onto it, and clicking Iron Head and taking out this Gengar so it's not a problem later. Um, and we got one layer of spikes up, but that's not enough. Skarmory, Skarmory's at 99% HP, Umbreon's at 20%. Let the Umbreon go down, because um, it's going to take Stealth Rocks here. And if he takes me out, that's honestly the same to me. Uh, probably better, because he doesn't get the lefties. What do I get? A Choice Scarf? Okay. I thought about... Because one option would have been going into my Gardevoir, which would have scarfed him into Trick again. Um, so now he's Leftovers. But I'm going to click Snarl in case he switches out into anything. Right? Or do I click Wish? Because he could go back out into the Verzian. Let's try to get the plus one off me. I'm going to wish. Um, he could kill me, and killing me is fine. Um, killing me is fine. And if he goes into Verzian, I don't want to hit it with an, a dark type attack. Because I don't want to give it justified right now. It's so close to a range where it'll die from Toxic and stuff, that giving it, like, two more kills is just not necessary. Um, and I did not mark down that, uh, Verizion kills Mega Venusaur with Zen Headbutt. And Gengar kills Umbreon with Sludge Wave. So he has Sludge Wave. And we know he's not Scarfed anymore, so Gardevoir definitely outspeeds. Um, which is definitely an option. A Choice Specs Psy Shock at this point, although Greninja could come in on that. Uh, Choice Specs Moonblast doesn't hit Heatran. But he still can't really switch out. I could go into Skarmory and set up another layer of spikes. I could go into Hothead here, who can definitely take a hit from the Gengar and click Earthquake. Might be time to go into Electivire. It might be time to go into Electivire. Uh, how much is Gengar doing? 40% tops. And I could click Earthquake, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, whatever. Let's go for let's go for Hothead. It's time to get. Electivire in. And click Earthquake. Hits the Gengar. Thunder Punch would also hit everything just fine. Uh, but Earthquakes. I don't. Verizion's not going to take two Earthquakes from this range. Uh, so if he switches into Verizion, uh, one Earthquake plus uh, Spikes plus Toxic is going to bring it down super low. I just switch out. Uh, let something else go down and then bring this thing back in once it's down. So, he can't switch into Verzian hard here. Uh, we are fine as far as HP is going to go after this Earthquake. Uh, we are keeping this thing alive for the Heatran for sure. Um, so Sludge Wave comes out. Should do 40% or so with the... Yeah, with the Assault Vest. And we get to take out the Gengar. So Electivire joining the New York Empoleon and putting in work in its first match here. Uh, and putting on pressure here too. I mean, 
what are you going to go into now? Verizion, I think, is the only switch in here. Although Greninja's an option. Greninja's an option. Because Greninja could probably kill me at this range. We know it's not Scarfed Greninja. It's also Burned. And we're just going to take Spikes. Um, so, how much does Greninja do? Greninja's doing... That's Protean. You're not Protean. Scald or Dark Pulse is doing 37.4 to 45.1%. We are at 72. We are at 46%, which makes Scald or Dark Pulse a guaranteed 2KO, but, but Hydro Pump, which he's already revealed, would kill me from this range, and I still don't want this thing getting Battle Bond quite yet. So we're going to go out into the Jellicent. If he does go for the Dark Pulse and predict that, that's good on him. Um, but Hydro Pump would be the only way to kill me there. And so if he doesn't go for it, then we do get the Water Absorb. And with the burn slowly chipping away at him, there's only so many turns he has left. Um, I can click Scald here very freely, or I can click Recover for his Dark Pulse. How much does Dark Pulse do to a Jellicent from a Greninja? Dark Pulse, that's a Z Dark Pulse, which he hasn't revealed yet. Um, so regular Dark Pulse is doing 54 to 65%, so I can just click Scald and take out the Greninja here. Um, I'm not going to just let him chip away at me. Um, just switches out the Greninja into the Verizion? Into the Heatran. Is he choiced? He's not. He used U-turn. We saw that. He just didn't expect me to do that, I guess. Um, so he's left over on Heatran. That's good. It's bulky Heatran. He can't touch me. Uh, so I can click Scald again. If he goes out into the Verizion... Eh. I mean, do I click Ice Beam here? Or do I just click Scald? I'll just click Scald. Go out of the Verizion. I mean, it's going to take Toxic, it's going to take Spikes, and it's going to take Scald. And it's going to be down to 10%. Um, and I don't I don't know if a Leaf Blade kills. If it does, then I'll just go out into Skarm. I mean, I can just go into Skarm on the Verizion anytime it comes in. Goes for the Flash Cannon. And we eat that up. We go for a Scald. That's going to do about another 45-50%. Um, does survive, he does get his leftovers, and Jellicent, does he let this thing go down here? I mean, Jellicent could get this kill. I could go for the Z Ice Beam here, uh, just just for funsies, predicting that Verizion. I just am surprised he went to Heatran on my Jellicent instead of Verizion, although I think he knows that the Verizion baits in the Skarmory. Um, and so he couldn't just go into it. I almost clicked, I almost clicked Ice Beam there. Um, but Scald plus the Toxic should take him out. If it doesn't, it's going to be really close. Um, doesn't take him out, but I am going to switch out into Skarmory. And, uh, Umbreon's going to get that kill, actually, because Umbreon is the one who Toxic's this. So... In comes Skarmory, he goes for the Leaf Blade, so Umbreon kills Verizion with Toxic Damage. And Verizion's gonna go down to that Poison. And he's down to Heatran and Greninja. Uh, by my calcs, I still have Gengar alive, but it's not, so I have to cross that out. Not by my calcs, but by my, my Cheat. My cheat sheet. So he trans here. Um, I think I let it take out Skarmory. Skarmory is not going to be a value to me against either of these last two Pokemon. So we're just going to click Iron Head. Um, I could click Spikes to make sure that the Greninja dies. Um, but Skarmory can go down here. That's totally fine. He tran kills Skarmory with Flamethrower. And that's 
fine. That's actually like perfectly fine. Um, Hothead should be able to come in, kill this thing. Greninja can come in, hit, take out my Electivire, and then actually what I, yeah, no, Greninja comes in and takes out Electivire for sure. Um, and then I go into my Scarf. My Scarf Gardevoir. And so we know that this thing dies to. So Electivire kills Heatran with Thunder Punch. Okay. So Greninja comes out, and it's going to go down to where Burn might kill it. Um, I could preserve Hothead and just go out into Jellicent, but I don't see a reason to, because Heatran, uh, Heatran, Greninja Oko's Hothead from this range anyway. Um, and so, yeah, Greninja, but Life Orb's going to take it out. Kills Electivire with Dark Pulse. But the life orb is gonna take it out. <laughs> Greninja dies to life orb recoil. And that'll be enough for the New York Empoleon to win the moon division of the TBL season two. There's a lot of work left to be done though because we are looking to have four more battles in this season. One more week of the regular season and three weeks of playoffs to win a championship. That's what it's going to require. Three of those have to be wins in order for us to continue on our championship run. So thank you so much for watching. Next week, expect a much more fun set. This week, I really wanted to sit down, team build, and win this battle. Um, this team was designed to, to have exactly what happened happen, um, which is just whittle him down, whittle him down, whittle him down until his walls are gone and my wall breakers come in and just put in some work. So, next week, we are going to be battling uh, T-Shen and the Arubian Cubones. They, nope, they changed their name. T-Shen and the Orange County Orangaroos, who are currently duking it out this week for top spot in the Sun Division against the uh, St. Louis Zards. So that's going to be really exciting. You can see the two potential finalists in the Week 10 matchup next week in my crossover. But we have locked up first place in the Moon Division. And it is a sigh of relief right now, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week for the team builder against those that goes blah, 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 against Tishen. And I hope you guys are enjoying, enjoying the TBL. I'm loving having these battles. And next week's going to be so much fun. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.